What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Mod of Minecraft 1.8.9 using the XP pack. Oh, yeah, guys. So we're here in the stronghold. This is right where we left off in the previous episode. However, I remembered that the power glove also has the Lux capacitor, so we can switch this by pressing shift and scrolling with our mouse. So we can do the real cannon like we've been doing a real gun, whatever it's called, or we can do the Lux capacitor. So that's basically a torch. It's like a full block kind of a thing. It looks better than a torch, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Use a little bit of power so you don't have to actually carry torches with you. Uh, you can break it just like a block, stick them on the ceiling, do whatever you want. They are really, really awesome. I like them. Cool. Uh, you can also change the color. By default, they are black, but you can make them so like this little center part is blue or red or yellow or any color in between anything you like to do uh it does not change the color of the light that it emits it's always just like a torch light or glowstone or whatever yeah you can't change the color of it yeah i started spamming these torches like wait a second <laughs> this glove can do that too so i went back to the base and i added in um yeah the lux capacitor which is surprisingly cheap it is one piece of glowstone and two pieces of iron i think and that's all that's it you add that to your thing, and then you can change the color, and you're done. I'm just putting torches around. When I logged back into the game, there's like two zombies sitting right here. There weren't zombies before. Two zombies were sitting right here. I smacked both of those. One with like leather armor is coming over this way, and I killed him. And then like two more came up the stairs. So I just decided, you know, we should probably light up some of this area and make it a little bit more safe. I think we should be pretty much okay right now. Cool. So our goal for today, we're going to go into the end. We're going to try not to die. And we're going to try and kill ourselves with the Ender Dragon. Once we get that done, uh, we should be able to start farming up Endermen, collect those Ender Pearls, and then make the actual flying stuff for this armor. So that's going to be awesome. Cool. So let's go ahead and do this. Yep. Got this thing ready to go. So in case I get knocked off, I should be able to hopefully get myself back on the island. We have the glider wings. Let's do it. Let's go through. Hopefully we don't die. The end? Question mark? Okay, so we're safe. There's a dragon. Oh, that does a lot of damage. Okay, I wasn't sure how much damage I was actually going to do to the dragon. That's good. That does a decent amount of damage. Come here, dragon. I'm noticing... Before we go any further, I'm noticing... This end dimension does not have the obsidian pillars, and I'm not entirely sure why. Which means the dragon can't heal. I don't know what... What causes that. Yeah, this looks like this is a pretty good way to kill the dragon pretty easily. Get wrecked. Get wrecked. Can't even do anything. Ha! I like it. Get cheesed, dragon. Give me all that XP. Bring it down on me. Give it to me. All right. Start looking at, an, at any of the Endermen. <laughs> okay, what do we get here? We have... The epic shader grab bag. I don't know if the dragon drops anything else in this pack other than experience. Uh, the last couple of packs I played, we've had draconic evolution, so it dropped a dragon heart. I don't think draconic evolution is in this mod pack. All right, well that was relatively easy. I'm surprised there is no obsidian pillars around. I don't know. I don't know why that is a thing. Uh, there's plenty of these ender lilies though, so we can go ahead and collect these. Uh, when they're fully mature, they will give you an ender pearl. You can replant them using these seeds. It takes like a week in game time, like full day night cycles. So whatever, it's like 20 minutes per day night cycle or something times seven. Uh, I think you can plant them on the end stone. They go a little bit faster, maybe five days. Uh, so anyway, this is a good way to collect the ender pearls for now. We set up an ender pearl farm in the overworld. Should we choose to probably what we're going to do is like what we normally do is dig out Something far away so we can unload this island. Yep. We're going to unload the island. We're going to build a proper Enderman farm. Hopefully, we'll be able to get some soul shard action happening here. That's going to be really, really cool. Um, I don't know if there's any teleportation in this mod pack. There might be. I would like a way that we can warp around a little bit easier. So, I'll have to look at that. Um, but, yeah, this is pretty cool. This end dimension seems kind of barren, doesn't it? There's not a lot going on here. There's no ores. No obsidian pillars. Didn't have to break any of the, the healing things. Doesn't really look like there's too much else. Looks like there's a lower level down there. It's down here. Anything? There's more Endermen? Alright. Well, 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get back up here. Cool. <laughs> I like the real gun. Just being able to move yourself around like that. That's really, really cool. But anyway, guys, let me go ahead and collect a bunch of these pearls. Maybe uh, just collecting all of the, the ender lilies that are around here will be enough ender pearls to get us going to make those ion thrusters. I'm not sure just yet. I'm going to collect as many as we can. Then we'll look at building some kind of a makeshift enderman farm. Nothing real crazy. Just as something that we can farm up ender pearls with and kill the Endermen so we can make the soul shards. But yeah, let me get some stuff done, guys, and we'll be right back. Oh my goodness, guys. So I've been doing all of the crafting. <laughs> this is taking so long. Having to melt down copper ore, having to melt down the iron ore, then cast it. The casting takes a long time. Then running through the IC2 machines with no upgrades at all. This takes forever. Yep, having to go over and farm more rubber and all this stuff. Yeah, we are getting stuff done, though. Um, so I'm trying to keep like the process materials, like the IC2 stuff out of the actual storage system, just so it's easier for me to find. So I'm keeping like all of that stuff over here, what's left of it. But yeah, we did get four of these ion thrusters and this is taking forever to do because we need two solenoids plus eight more. We need two of these force field emitters. And then these advanced circuits. There's so many circuits. Each of these solenoids requires an electronic circuit plus two iron plates plus all of this wiring. Yep, I've had to spawn in more of that wiring. I'm putting all the resources over here like I've done before. Um, so we're not cheating things or whatever. Uh, anyway, so we got these four ion thrusters finally made. Let's go and get these installed. I'm curious to see how this works because it's been a long time. So we got that in there. So we have the tinker table where we can adjust the thrust. Yeah, let's go all the way up. Let's just do max. Let's see what this thing does. Oh. Okay. So if I fly up using this maximum, kind of makes weird sounds. So we do that, and then we can use the glider to glide around. I think that's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah, we're already full on energy again, right? That kinetic generator is just so good. That is so good. You know, there's roguelike dungeons around we haven't really explored. We should probably look at doing that. I think uh, the original we, the original one we saw was over here, wasn't it? Isn't that what this brick building is? I keep forgetting. I think this was the different top side of a roguelike. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this goes all the way up here to the top floor. That's where we got our bed and stuff. Cool. The cake is a lie. Actually, it might not be a lie. But yeah, now we got actual proper flight, guys. This is awesome. So we can fly around pretty quickly. And then we can glide to save energy and refill our stuff. Uh, I don't remember if there's a hover mode in this. There might not be. It might just be we have to use the glider. But either way, that is perfectly fine. Because we can fly anytime we want to. Glide around, recharge up our batteries. This is really, really good. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I was having to be a little careful there in the end. Uh... Using this method to get around is good, but it only works if you're so close to blocks. Like, if you go out over the void and you try to shoot down or whatever to boost yourself back up, it doesn't work that way because it doesn't run into any blocks, which technically doesn't make sense, but that's the way this works. <laughs> so, now that we got that done, I am super, super happy. But things that I've uh, been noticing, we haven't collected a lot of rubber, right? Rubber seems to be one of the... The most important things, whoops, we got regular flight, what am I doing? Rubber seems to be one of the most important things in IC2 crafting. It seems like a lot of the recipes have IC2 in them. So yeah, we're using like the rubber trees over here with the little spots on them to collect the rubber. We use the tree tap on there, or yeah, the tree tap. We get the little rubber, the resin stuff off these little dots and we got to wait for it. Well, it kind of, I mean, it's easy to do this. You just walk around and find the orange dots and do it, but... Yeah, it would be much better if we could separate the orange dots from the, the parts that don't have orange dots. Just make a big old wall of it. That's really the best way to do these IC2 trees. Unless you have Mine Factory Reloaded installed, and you can use like the Fruit Picker, which would automatically pick the little dots for you and then put them into a chest. But we don't have IC... Or I'm sorry. Uh, I don't think we have MFR in this pack. Um... Yeah, we don't have Mine Factory Reloaded. We do not. So we can't do that method. So the next best thing is to pick up the blocks and set them aside. 
Now, I said that we don't have the portal gun, so we can't pick up the blocks and move them before, but people have pointed out we do have practicalities, and practicalities has an item called the matter... Uh, do, 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 matter transporter. Transporter? <laughs> transporter. Yes, the matter transporter. I've never used this thing. I assume this works just like you think. You click on it, the block goes into the unit, and then you can set it down somewhere. I haven't tried this, so we're going to figure out if this actually works. I'm going to have to get used to not using <laughs> the real gun anymore. The real cannon, whatever that is. Okay, so it's two ender pearls, a diamond, and a stick. That, that. Uh, do we have any sticks in here? We do. Cool. Got it. All right, so let's go ahead and make one of these. Done. So can I just use this on a machine? Oh. Okay, so don't use these on industrial craft machines. I broke it. I broke it. It's really broken now. <laughs> okay, so we don't use it on that machine. Uh, hopefully it'll work just fine on the non-machine blocks. I don't even remember what that machine was on the end. Was that a compressor? Macerator? Either way, they're not expensive. But let's see if we can use it on these little rubber spots. So we pick that up, set it down. Ooh. Okay, so it's facing this way. Still facing this way. Still facing this way. Okay, so this is exactly what we want. So this works great on the trees, does not work so great on the machines. So what we can do... There's a zombie somewhere. We can just pick these up and make like a huge wall out of these things. Probably like three wide would be the easiest. We got ones facing this way. Do this, face them inside. Yep, that'll make things a lot easier. And then all we gotta do is just come inside this little three by three area, right click on all the blocks, and we will know for sure without having to walk around when we have rubber that's ready. Yep, so uh, with this particular method, uh, what we can do is grow a whole bunch of rubber trees. We don't have to do in any particular order anymore. Yeah, we just grow a whole bunch of them. And yeah, just pick the spots, put them into this little thing facing inside. And it's all going to be really, really good. I like it. Cool. So let me get to this. I'm going to go ahead and finish up all the spot collecting. Whoop. My mouse kind of wiggled there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get... Going with all the spot collecting, make this big 3x3 inside area, and we'll be right back, guys. Well, all right. I didn't realize the matter transporter at the very start. I didn't realize this actually had a durability bar, but it does. So I guess you can only pick things up and set them down so many times, which is fine. Um, these kind of items are kind of overpowered. Kind of. Uh, so and it, it doesn't really cost that much. It's like a diamond, couple of vendor pearls, and a stick. So whatever. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Although it did have the problem with the IC2 machine. I don't know if that's a problem with this mod or IC2. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, so that's just something to be aware of. You can only use it so many times. I assume it's like 30 or 50 times or maybe 64. I don't know. But anyway, uh, getting all of those different spots over there into one central location. This is great. Um, I haven't grown any more rubber trees, but now all I got to do is just come over here and click the little dots like so. Yeah, it's very, very quick to collect rubber. And then I can just come back in like five minutes or whatever. And most of these, if not all of the spots, should be uh, orange again. It seems to me like the uh, the spots, the IC2 spots, are respawning a lot faster in 1.8 than they ever have before. And I don't know if that's just something with this particular mod pack or 1.8 version where like maybe the random tick rate has been increased or I don't know. But... Uh, it definitely seems like these things are growing the spots back just a little bit quicker than they used to, but, uh, again, I don't know. Maybe that's just me thinking they are, and they aren't really, <laughs> but it feels like it. So anyway, oh, got, uh, apples here. Yeah, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get some more stuff done over, yeah, get some more crafting done. Uh, I wanna get some more things hooked up on the power fist. This item here does have a few more things, like you can use it as a pickaxe. You can also use it as an axe, and I think there's a few other uh, tools that we can use that thing as. Let's take a look at it real quick. So, yeah, we got a leaf blower, which I think removes the tall grass. Uh, Lux capacitor, that's the thing we put on. Like I said, just glowstone 2 iron, pretty easy. Or scanner, I don't think we're going to want that. Flint and steel would be okay, not necessarily anything we need. Yeah, there's a few other things. We can make it so it can hoe. We can make it so it can shear leaves. Um, yeah, diamond drill upgrade. This might be something we do. 
I don't know how fast this goes. It might be a little slighter that we can make it faster or whatever. But yeah, we got a few more different things to put on here. So I might look at doing that. Another thing I wanted to do was uh, get some of these assists going for the pants. Yeah, so we can probably sprint faster, move along the ground faster. Although we can move pretty quickly just by flying. So I don't know how necessary that is. But yeah, if we can move around a little bit faster, that might be good. So anyway, let me get some more stuff done, guys. And we'll be right back. All right, guys. Well, it's been a while since I've used the power suit fully. There's a lot of features that I'm still rediscovering. Uh, one of those things was on the helmet, we have the flight control. I remember this thing. Uh, this thing allows you basically create a flight, but there's a few different options with it. You can do the Y look ratio all the way down. That's what this is right here. We press the, uh, the button. If you look up and you start flying, I don't think it does anything when it's all the way at zero, but yeah, you can go forward and backwards and you can do space bar to go up and then Z to go down. It is a different key. It's not shift anymore. If you do shift, you just kind of fly slowly like you're sneaking in midair. Right, so that's pretty cool. Um, if we do the wide look ratio all the way up, 100%. So as I go out, I can just look up and press forward, and we basically go straight up, basically. You can go up pretty quick, and then you can look straight down and then press forward as well, or maybe back, no, I think it's forward. Yeah, press forward as well, and you go down. I don't personally like this functionality. While it can be cool, I, it's not something that I want. <laughs> so we're going to turn this all the way off like so. Yeah, the problem is with the flight control on, it's like you're always in flight mode. Uh, so I mapped the key to G that you can bring up the key binds here. And then all you got to do is just click new, press a key like J, for instance. We have J here. Then we can drag something over close to J. And you can see they got a little link. So we can also trash these if we don't want them. Or maybe trash the J. There you go. And then you can stick this one back over here. So all these different things you can map to different keys, like the wings or the jetpack, turning that on and off, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I map the um, the flight control to C. So whenever I press C, we can turn that on. We get like creative mood flight, essentially. Now it is still affected by the, like the gun. It still kind of bounces me around a bit. So it's not, you know, 100% creative, I guess. Or maybe that still works in creative... I don't really know how this thing works, but it does have a strong knockback anyway, so that's pretty cool. Now, I was going to go ahead and hook up um, the sprint assist, but as it turns out, this requires stuff that we don't have right now. Uh, it requires four of these servo motors, and the servo motor... Yeah, this is two solenoids each, plus basic machine casing, plus wiring. We're starting to run low on these resources. So I think we're gonna hold off on doing any further upgrades. I think it's about time we start looking at doing a quarry. And uh, I was trying to figure out how we're gonna power the quarry. We have oil around, so we could power it. We could grass on this oil. We can refine that down into fuel and then we could use like the build craft engines or whatever to produce RF. That's a possibility. I was almost thinking that we should go to um, immersive engineering. We could revisit the water wheel. We used this a little bit early game in Infinity Evolved Expert Mode. But in order to make like a water wheel, we're going to need three of these, right? So that means we need three pieces of steel. We don't have steel yet. So that means we're also going to need 12 water wheel segments. Each of these segments require treated wood planks and treated sticks. You get the treated wood by combining, I think... Oh, I can't remember. I think it's creosote with planks and a crafting grid somehow. It's been a minute since I've had to do this. Uh, alternatively, I can't. Oh, I mapped a key to J, didn't I? Uh oh. Can I unmap J? J. Did that screw this up? Go to controls here. Uh, J is supposed to be the map, and now it's not working. Full screen map J. Uh oh. Uh oh, I might have messed things up, guys. <laughs> it doesn't show it in here anymore, but pressing J doesn't do anything. That's a problem. Okay, well, I'm going to have to figure that out. I was going to say we could go over to the village that we saw. I can't remember. There was one that had the uh, the immersive engineering house in it, and that house is made out of the treated wood and the treated planks and stuff. Uh, we could mine that house and use that 
Yep, I think there's a few more things to figure out here. I'm gonna find out what's wrong with the map. I might just have to re-log. I might have to go in here and try and remap something to J. Should have pressed J before. If we do J here, is that still is that no nah, J's broken? I broke it! <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna figure this out. We'll be right back, guys. So yeah, as it turns out, re-logging in the game does unmap that button so I can get to my map again by pressing J. So that's pretty awesome. Um, I just installed the axe and the pickaxe upgrade and all that stuff in my my fist here. I haven't really tried using it. So it doesn't seem maybe I need a shovel upgrade for gravel. I haven't tried that yet. Uh so how's it Ooh, okay, that works pretty good. Can we vein mine these? No, can we vein mine that? No. Okay, so I don't know if that's because of this glove. Let's try with the the regular axe vein mine. Nope, this. No, okay. So whatever it is, <laughs> the vein miner. Just is not configured to work with everything, unfortunately. But yeah, we're just going to go ahead and disassemble this guy's house. Sorry, buddy. Uh, you have a lot of these treated planks, and I want them. I don't have any creosote. So, yep, taking apart your house is the next best thing. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Whoops, whoa, I'm still getting used to uh, flying around with this power suit. It is quite different than just having a regular, like an angel ring or something like that, for instance. Regular creative flight. Yeah, it definitely is. A little bit different than having a jetpack as well. But yeah, I think we'll get used to this pretty quickly. So anyway, let me go ahead and finish disassembling this guy's house. Mm -hmm. Taking it all apart. I'm probably going to steal some of this wool too. So we can make another bed. So I have one on the go. That would be pretty good. Uh, another mod that I saw that was in this mod pack. I think it's called Iron Backpacks. So I assume these are like the iron chests. But like backpacks. So this would be pretty good. Like we get a diamond one. I don't know if there's anything better than this, but get a diamond one. That'd be like a portable diamond chest. I think that'd be pretty awesome. So I might look into making some of those in the future here uh, for carrying storage around with us. Uh, there's still also the like the ender chest and ender pouches. These are things that I've been wanting to look at as well. So this is from the ender thing mod. So we might make one of those diamond chests and stick it in the ender pack. Oh, I guess they're called ender packs. In the Ender Thing mod, yeah, we might do that just so we don't lose it. I think the Ender packs are just like the Ender pouches from the other mod that we've used many times in the past. But anyway, guys, like I said, let me go ahead and continue doing this. I'm gonna disassemble this entire house. We'll be back. All right, guys, I went ahead and I sheared some sheep. It's actually quite difficult finding white sheep around here for some reason. But yeah, I sheared some sheep so we could make this white, white, white Ender pouch. Yeah, we got a white sheep there, but it seems like there's a lot of black sheep around here for some reason. And I don't know why. I thought there was another one over here. But yeah, I was looking for sheep around. I was kind of looking at the mini map. It's like black, black, black over here. I thought there was more black ones. Yeah, there's a lot of black sheep. Normally, you find the white ones, and like all the different colors are pretty rare. Not around here for some reason. Anyway, I don't know if that has to do with some mod doing that, or uh, that's because of nearby the roguelike dungeon. Doesn't really matter, but... We got our ender pouch set up here. So if I right click on this, it says global ender inventory. I assume this works just the same as the regular, like the ender chest and stuff. I haven't really given this a go to see how this all works. Uh, there's ender tanks in here. Yeah, that looks rather inexpensive to be honest. And then we got the, um, the ender chest. Uh, let's see, craft with an ender chest or craft with an ender lock. Shift right click on a vanilla chest. Oh. Okay, I thought I had to make another ender chest for this. Craft, craft with an ender lock. Shift. Right click on a vanilla chest. Okay, so we need one of these ender locks. I know it's ender key. There's an ender lock. All right. So that is an eye of ender, some wool, and some ingots. So I don't know if we can put this in the crafting grid with colors to change the color of it. I assume we can. Um, so it looks like we're actually going to need a little bit more white wool. Let's go see if we can collect some real quick. I want to try and make one of those. Yeah, I was thinking I was going to have to make another ender chest. I didn't actually read that tool tip before. I probably should have. Give me a sheep. Give me two. Ah, you give me one. Okay, well, we got one wool from that one. Yeah, there's plenty of sheep around. There's one that I sheared a little bit ago. Bunnies around. Lots of black sheep around. I should just come over here with... Okay, here's a white one. With uh, some... Bone meal. Do we got three? Okay, we got three now. Yeah, I should just come over here, bone meal, and just <laughs> paint them all white, just so I have those available in the future. Yeah, it's so weird seeing so many of the black ones around here. But anyway, 
Um, yeah, let's get down here. Okay, so we need to make ourselves the lock. So to make one of these, that is wool, eye of ender, three gold. That is not so bad. There's that. We need an eye of ender. So an ender pearl. We got plenty of ender pearls from all these ender lilies that we got. So we probably don't have to set up the enderman farm anytime soon, but we will have to do that eventually. I do expect, uh, and one piece of blaze powder. Cool. So we can do that, that, that got that. I think that's all we need, right? Let's go ahead and see if we can make one of these. Boom. Done. Okay. So it says to do it on a vanilla chest. Shift right click on an ender chest to set or replace the color key. Right. So let's do that. Shift right click. There it is. Okay. So now we have a global ender inventory. We can see there's a bed in there. And if I right click on this, we can see there's a bed. I do notice that opening this does not open this like the other mod does, which is fine. They are different mods. They don't have to do the same exact thing, but yeah, that's pretty cool that we do have shared inventory. I can always get to it from here and I can always get to it from here. So if, if I ever die and I lose this thing, I can still access it back at the base. It's all good. I like it. So things that I want to keep in here, like I said, we're probably going to make one of those uh, backpacks or whatever. Uh, I don't think we're going to do that right now. These are just things I'm thinking about for the future anyway. Uh, so that village, we ended up getting 51 treated wood planks. We got five treated sticks. We also got a windmill blade, which we won't be using. And then we can put all this other stuff away for now. We don't really need this other stuff on us. Cool. So the, let's see, the recipe for the water wheel, the water wheel segments, that is three planks. And then, yeah, we need sticks. I don't know if we're going to end up having enough to do what we want to do here, but we can give it a go and see how much we have. I did that inverted, didn't I? <laughs> wait, what? Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Um, it was like this, like this, like this, and then like that. That's the difference. Okay. So it is four of those per water wheel. Okay. So there's one, we're going to want three or two more water wheels to get this thing properly going. So there's that. Yeah. Let's go ahead and make some more sticks out of this stuff. Hopefully we're going to have enough. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we will. There we go. So there's that. Yep. We are going to need a few more planks. We don't have enough here to get that third segment going on. Uh, yeah, we need one more plank and then we need a few more sticks in order to get this going. We don't have any creosote oil. So that's going to be the next thing. So we're going to have to look at making the Coke, the coal Coke. Uh, coke bricks. So yeah, we're going to need bricks plus clay. Um, and I guess sandstone in the center that gets us two of the coke bricks. Yeah. And we just set that up like a three by three by three. I think it has to be completely solid and we click it with the engineer's hammer. I don't remember if we ever made an engineer's hammer. Maybe we did. We did it was a while ago. Mm, I wish this thing had sorting. I know there is a sorting thing that we can get for this. I guess a searching thing. Yeah, I don't think so. So we're going to need an engineer's this right here, which is just two sticks, some iron and some string. That isn't difficult to do. Well, there's a few more things to do. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make a few of those recipes for the Coke oven bricks. I'm going to put some coal in it. We're going to smell them down. We've seen this stuff many times in the past. It's just, um, Immersive Engineering's version of it. We've seen it through Realcraft many times in the past. But yeah, guys, I think we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today. Seeing a couple of cool mods. I'm super happy that we got the flight going on now. We can move backwards and forwards in this suit really, really quickly, which is awesome. I like that a lot. Um, the only thing is it just makes that the noise, but that's fine. But anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.